Hello everyone and welcome to our workshop on homeopathic remedies for allergies. Just a quick disclaimer. Thank you for your interest in homeopathy and welcome to our friends and family homeopathic community. I have been practicing homeopathy since 1994, special love for homeopathy. I strive to empower, educate and guide families looking to incorporate safe and effective over-the-counter non-prescription homeopathic remedies in their well care routine. All material provided at this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for a physician's consultation. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. And always consult a qualified physician prior to taking any remedies, medications or supplements. A little bit about me. I have a bachelor's degree in homeopathy from Mumbai University and I'm both certified by the Council for Homeopathic Certification as CCH or a Certified Classical Homeopath. I'm registered with NASH, which is the North American Society of Homeopaths, and I'm a lifetime member of the National Center for Homeopathy. I'm a homeopath, not an MD, and therefore families must retain the services of a primary care physician for appropriate evaluations, diagnostics, checkups, and reference to specialists if needed. My relationship with my families is that of an educator, not of a prescriber. And it's your choice to use or not use the information I give you. And as with anything that you use for yourself or your family, you must research and find answers to all your queries. Never disregard medical advice or delay seeking such advice. So this workshop webinar is dedicated to my dad it's he's the best dad on this planet oops i'm in universe he would always remind me when i told him that he was the best dad on this planet that he would say just planet and then follow it up with no dad you're the best dad in the universe so this workshop webinar is dedicated to him today is his birthday and i'm dedicating this um, informational webinar to him a little bit about homeopathic remedies. They are safe, inexpensive, cost about five to ten dollars. They're non-toxic, and they're easily available over the counter at most health food stores like Whole Foods, Mrs. Greens, the Vitamin Shop. They can also be ordered online. They can be administered to babies, pregnant women, as well as the elderly under the supervision of a qualified homeopath. The 30C potency is considered safe to use for infants, children, and adults. And there's no side effects when a carefully chosen remedy is administered in the right potency and the right dosage. Chronic diseases are usually treated with infrequent repetitions of high potency of a deep acting constitutional or state remedy, whereas acute conditions are treated with frequent repetitions of low potencies. The sensitivity of the individual patient also plays an important role in selection of remedy and potency. The more dilute a potency, the higher it is considered to be. Homeopathy to the rescue. A um, lot of our remedies are sourced from plants. Um, this is what most remedies look like. They look like these white uh, pills. And one tiny pill is considered one dose. And if by mistake the whole bottle is taken at one time, it would still be considered as one dose or one stimulus. It's the number of times the remedy is given and not the number of pills that is important. And one can start by giving one to three doses of maybe two pills as a dose in an acute situation. And the doses can be five to 30 minutes apart on a neutral clean mouth. And by neutral clean mouth, I mean that there should be no taste of food or drink in the mouth you can have water before you take the pellets but avoid water for at least uh, 15 minutes after you've taken the remedy and if god forbid you happen to eat something within 15 minutes or drink water within 15 minutes of having taken the remedy no big deal just go ahead and repeat that dose so you start with one to three doses in an acute situation which would be five to 30 minutes apart and then go on decreasing the frequency and give a dose every one to three hours as better, and then tapering to twice a day, once a day, and stopping as symptoms improve. 
And of course, your homeopath will be able to guide you to the right remedy, right dosage. And if you want, you can also watch my um, FAQs video for more information. So aconite nepalis. This is the very first remedy to think of or to consider for any symptoms that come on suddenly from exposure to cold, cold winds, cold food or cold drinks. One of the reasons my dad wanted me to study homeopathy was so I could solve his sinus issues. Aconite quickly became my dad's go-to remedy because he was very susceptible to cold exposure. His sinuses would act up immediately. He could not tolerate dust, fan, air conditioning, cold drinks, ice cream, or even fruits that had been refrigerated. He would immediately sneeze up a storm. And I have unfortunately or fortunately inherited that sneezing capacity from him. So here is a video of what my son describes as our familial earth shattering, tsunami stopping, intruder scaring away sneeze. Now I'm going to go over some homeopathic remedies with their characteristic keynote indications. So these are uh, symptoms that can guide you to selecting that remedy based on the keynotes as we call. So the very first remedy to consider is apis, apis nerifica. There is always redness, swelling, burning, after exposure to any suspect allergen, or it could be a bee sting, a mosquito bite, an insect bite. So if you see redness, swelling, burning, uh, consider Apis Malefica as your first remedy to start with. The very next remedy to think of is the common onion or Allium sepa. A person needing Allium sepa will have profuse, fluent, burning nasal discharge, with tearing of the eyes, with bland tears. And these people are usually worse in a warm room and they feel better in the open air. They'll also have tingling in the nose with violent sneezing. The next remedy is euphrasia or eye bright. This has the opposite symptoms than those of alien sepa. So with euphrasia, you have the red eyes and the burning tears with a profuse, bland nasal discharge, and they are worse in the open air. So with Allium sepa, your nasal discharge is burning, but the tears are bland, whereas with euphrasia, or the person that needs euphrasia, the eyes are red with burning tears, whereas the nasal discharge is going to be completely bland. Now, if you find a person that has both burning tears as well as burning nasal discharge, then consider arsenicum al for that person. And the person that needs arsenicum al will usually have the nose or the area around the nose and the upper lip will become red and raw because the discharge is so accurate. And right as we are talking about arsenicum, I can but not mention phosphorus. Phosphorus is a remedy which is complementary to the arsenicum al. And a person eating phosphorus has the clear discharge and it's just constantly flowing non-stop and you're just going through tissue after tissue after tissue and the discharge just won't stop. So if a person is having just a clear runny nose which is non-stop, consider phosphorus for that person. So we had talked about Apis Malefica. It's one of the top leading remedies for allergic reactions, for allergies, uh, for uh, any kind of bite stings where it's swollen, stinging, sensitive, with burning, itching, and they feel a little bit better with cold applications. So any sudden swelling, redness, puffiness from exposure to a suspect allergen, consider Apis Malefica. And as we discussed about the dosing initially, that you would consider a dose every five to 30 minutes initially, the first two or three doses. And as they are feeling better, then you can uh, go from every one to three hours and then tapering to 
twice a day, once a day, and then stop as they're feeling better. Ipis is also a good remedy for symptoms of UTIs, for cystitis, where there is burning and stinging. Alien SIPA. We talked about Alien SIPA when I was going over the keynotes, um, that they have a watering of the eyes, as well as they have this bland discharge. But remember that their eyes, um, the tears are bland, but their nasal discharge is acrid excoriating. And then remember arsenicum alb. Arsenicum alb has both. It has the burning tears of a person needing euphrasia and the burning nasal discharge of alien sepa along with the sneezing. And the nose will become red, raw due to this acrid discharge. This is the remedy to think of when you are going through a lot of temperature changes from hot to cold to hot, back to cold, or if you are drinking hot beverage and then cold beverage and back to the hot beverage. So if there's a constant change in temperature, for example, uh, during the winter months when we are going from our homes into the car and from the car to the out, cold outside and then back into the warm store and then you come out into the cold and again you're back into your warm car and then you're again back outside in the cold till you get into your house. So that constant temperature change and if you start having a runny nose, consider arsenicum oil. This is a story about how this helped my dad. Um, I remember he was distributing my wedding cards 26, 27 years back. And uh, you know, you go to everybody's house in India when you're giving out those wedding invitations, they will offer you either tea or they may offer you a cold drink. And uh, it was a standing joke with him. He said that, you know, when he went from one house, they would always ask, okay, whose house are you going to next? And he said that whenever um, he left the house, if the first people had offered him a cold beverage, invariably the second house would offer him a hot beverage. And then alternatingly, it was cold, hot, cold, hot. It was almost as if these people were letting the next family know that my dad was gonna be over to give the wedding invitation. So they were ready with the opposite <laughs> beverage of what was offered in the previous household. I don't know whether to believe him or if he was joking, but. This is the remedy to consider if you have, if you're going through uh, temperature changes within a short period of time. And now arsenicum al not only is an amazing remedy for allergies, it's the remedy to consider for food poisoning, diarrhea, vomiting. It's one of the top remedies uh, for travel. Um, Moving forward with other some of the other homeopathic remedies with their characteristic key indica keynote indications. And these, I'm initially just going over single symptoms or keynotes of each remedy. And in the end, I'm going to go into details of each remedy as well. So if you're just looking for keynotes, this is the place to be. And then towards the end of the workshop, I'm going to go into details as well of each remedy. So you'll notice that a lot of these remedies on this page, like Jalsamium or Hydrastis or Silesia, they are used for many of many other things in uh, homeopathy. So we always choose a remedy based on symptoms. So it won't matter whether the symptoms you have are from a viral infection, a bacterial infection, or whether it's because you're allergic to something. We would still pick the remedy based on the symptom presentation. So if your symptoms are congestion with heaviness in the forehead, tightness, chills, your remedy would be, will be gelsamium. That's the remedy that'll help you. If you're having congestion with post-nasal um, discharge with thick ropey secretions and uh, leave that, that post-nasal drip with a continuous feeling of mucus in the throat, hydrastis will help you. If you're having a lot of sinus congestion with not much discharge or you're into like the fifth, sixth, seventh day and uh, your congestion is not letting up, consider Silesia. If you have incessant sneezing from freshly cut grass or from smell of flowers, sabidilize your remedy. If your symptoms are more right-sided and they're again brought on by smell of flowers, sanguinaria is the remedy that will help you. 
if you have allergy symptoms where your palate is very itchy, there's only one remedy, which is Arundu. If you have all of the symptoms of arsenicum all, meaning you have the burning nasal discharge and you have the burning tears, the acrid, acrid excoriating discharge, which is making your upper lip and area around the nose red, and if along with that you have severe itching, the remedy to consider is ambrosia. Another remedy for post-nasal drip, which causes a dry spasmodic cough, where the air that is being inhaled starts to feel really cold, the remedy is Coralium rubrum. Then you have Lemna Minor. Lemna Minor is a remedy for nasal polyps. These people are usually worse in wet weather and they have offensive odor in their blocked nose and they have complete loss of smell. Then the last remedy to consider in, in this group of remedies is Sinapis nigra. And the keynote symptom for Sinapis nigra is that the alternate nostrils get blocked with discharge. So they'll tell you that the left nostril is blocked and then after some time, the right nostril is blocked. So they're able to breathe through one nostril and one nostril is always blocked. So you might remember I just went over the keynote symptoms for Sabadilla, where there is incessant sneezing. And especially if they have been exposed to freshly cut grass or you know smell of flowers. Um, symptoms, other symptoms include ear, with the eyes that are tearing, burning, redness, itching, with tingling inside the nose, and the nose that runs along a lot, along with a lot of congestion. So congestion, sneezing, tearing and burning in the eyes, redness, and they don't have a lot of nasal discharge. It does run a lot, but they feel that itching and tingling inside the nose, which will lead you to Sabadilla. So sulfur, this to me is like a polycrest deeper acting remedy. I, had, I was used to using it in like a 200 Sierra 1M, as a deeper acting polycrest constitutional or state remedy. But I discovered that I could use it in a 30C when my son had severe allergies as a toddler. And I had tried all of these acute remedies that I just mentioned, and nothing was helping him. His eyes would be red and swollen, and he would be constantly rubbing his eyes because he was so itchy. So then I said, what have I got to lose? I've tried everything, and I gave him the sulfur 30C and it helped him. I was so surprised. So then I started adding a couple of pellets to his water bottle and had him sip every few minutes whenever we were outside. I was a life savior, this remedy. You can see how his eyes were like red, swollen, and he would be constantly itching and he could hardly keep his eyes open. And then once I started giving him the sulfur and water, it was like a magic, magical turnaround for him. So as I said, sulfur, this is for itching, skin, itching in the eyes, uh, with redness, swelling. Um, it can be used in a 30C for these symptoms. Now here are some, rem some of the remedies that we use for viral illnesses. For example, the natremule, the pulsatilla, the nuxvamica, halibichromicum, sembucus, spongia. So, but these same remedies that we use for viral or bacterial illnesses can also be used for symptoms of allergies if they match. So when would we use natremu? A key note for using natremu is if the nose, if the nasal discharge is like egg white, clear, with a lot of sneezing and congestion. When would we use pulsatilla? Obviously, with congestion, there would be the bland, colorful, thick, white, thick yellow nasal discharge. And a keynote of pulsatilla is that they get aggravated from bread and baked goods. With Nuxvamica, the congestion is usually more at night, can be accompanied with indigestion, and it's especially indicated if, this is, if the congestion has been brought on by eating foods that do not suit them or by dietary indiscretion. Kali Bai, you really cannot mistake this remedy, and this is a game changer. The remedy has, a person needing the remedy has thick, 
stringy, colorful discharge, which can be drawn into strings. And there's usually pain at the root of the nose, as well as in the frontal sinuses. So if a person complains of sinus pain, which is at the root of the nose, or which is the pain in the frontal sinus region, along with that thick, stringy, colorful discharge, which can be drawn into strings, consider Kalibar. I've had fam moms send me pictures of the kid's nasal discharge, and they've literally shown me how it can be drawn into like a thread when you like, if you hold it, I know it sounds icky, but if you were to hold it and just like pull it, it can be drawn into threads. And that's, that's the person that needs um, Kali Bichromicum. And Kali Bichromicum and Pulsatilla are pretty close. They both have the colorful discharge, but the Pulsatilla discharge is like a thick blob, whereas the Kali Bai discharge can be drawn into strings. Then you have Sembucus. Sembucus is your elderberry, and this is the potentized um, elderberry. Again, this is for like called what you call the congestion of the dry snuffles, where there's not much discharge, but they are very congested, and the congestion or the cough is usually aggravated by lying down. So it will even if you put them down for a nap in the afternoon, or whether when you when you go down to uh, go to bed in the night, as soon as you lay down, the congestion, the cough increases. And then the last common remedy, spongia, which we use for dry hacking cough. So even if the dry hacking cough has come on from, a per, from an allergen or exposure to an allergen, if the cough is dry and hacking, we would consider spongia twisting. So like I said, this, is, this webinar has been dedicated to my dad because I got into homeopathy thanks to him. I owe him a debt of gratitude for pushing me to study homeopathy. And uh, just sharing, these were some of his teachings, some of the things that he shared. Um, be kind to everyone. The hashtag paid forward, help everybody. Spread love and joy and always smile and be happy. How can you learn more? So here I'm sharing some resources. Um, join a local homeopathic study group, attend a workshop like this one, and there are many more conducted by the Holistic Moms Network, National Center for Homeopathy, Americans for Homeopathic, Homeopathy Choice. Um, ask questions, be an informed patient. Take control of your and your family's health. You can like my Think Homeopathy First Facebook page. You can follow me on Instagram. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like the National Center for Homeopathy's Facebook page and join our paid forward Think Homeopathy First Facebook community by supporting the National Center for Homeopathy with your membership, which is $75 a year. And if you email me at yashiatyao.com, I can send you a coupon code to get $10 off. So this is how we interact. This is, I, I can't wait for the spring and the summer where I usually sit out and answer all uh, my emails. And this is our paid interact with the members. There's about 425 of us as of now in our paid forward thing, Homeopathy First Facebook group. And uh, we support each other. You can ask any question. You can go back and search discussions for any acute ailments and you'll find all the answers there early in the morning middle of the night weekends any time of the day this is a great resource which is available to you so here are some more resources as i mentioned my website blog social media youtube channel they're a treasure trove of uh, free information and other than that here are links to some websites that i trust there's homeopathycenter.org, which is the National Center for Homeopathy's website, remedyseeker.com, which is Mary Espinwal's website, mirandacastro.com, Miranda's website, I just love her, drhomeo.com, homeopathy for women, homeopathyworks.com. And then I highly recommend that everybody take Mary Espinwal's free hashtag newbie course. And you can do that by going to our website and clicking on this link, which I'll also I'll put in the description below. So this is my mantra for life. Not always easy to follow, but I try my best. 
find your joy, be kind, like my dad said, spread sunshine, choose happy, find whatever that gives you joy, whatever that makes you happy, find time to do that. It could be singing, painting, laughing, <laughs> dancing, whatever it is, watching a movie, Netflix, whatever it is, poetry, find something that gives you happiness and find the time to do that activity for sure. So as I had mentioned in the beginning of the workshop, what I discussed initially were keynotes. Now I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail of some of the most common remedies. And here, Dr. Margaret Lucy Tyler has actually put these remedies in alphabetical order and has given specific symptoms, a little bit above and beyond the keynotes I gave you, indications for each of these remedies. So these are pointers to some of the common remedies for hay fever or you know allergies that we experience in the spring as well as the fall. But if you have those allergy, have those symptoms from exposure and to any allergen, the remedy would still work if the symptoms match. So it doesn't matter what you were exposed to. If your symptoms match the remedy, that remedy will help you. So some of the common remedies, as I said, she's going in alphabetical order. Ilium sepa, arsenicum, arsiod, arum triphylum, arundo, bromium, carbovedge, Dalcamara, Euphrasia, Jalsamium, Chaliodatum, Chaliphosphoricum, Lachesis, Naja, Natrumio, Nexvamica, Serinum, Ranunculus, Sabadilla, Sanguinaria, Silica, Sinapis nigra, Sticta, Baithia, and Zincum. So you'll see some of the remedies that we did go went over the keynotes are in here. Some of the remedies are not. Like I went over some of the common remedies which are for other symptoms, but can also be used for allergy symptoms. And then Margaret Tyler has gone over some rare remedies as well, which, are, which I did not discuss when I was talking over keynotes. So this workshop literally covers every remedy that you can consider for symptoms of allergies. So here are pointers to some of the common um, hay fever remedies or remedies that you can use for allergies. Um, as we are going in alphabetical order, the first remedy to consider is alium sepa. So we talked about alium sepa, sneezing with increasing frequency, watery discharge that drips from the nose and it excoriates the lip and the wings of the nose. And the other remedies to consider for the same exact symptom where the discharge is acrid, are arsenicum and arum triphylum. There's rawness in the nose with copious lacrimation, meaning lots of tears. But the tears are bland. The fluid from the nose is excoriating and the fluid from the eyes is bland. And as we had talked before, it's the reverse of euphrasia. In euphrasia, the discharge from the eyes is acrid, whereas the discharge from the nose is bland. Generally, it begins on the left side and then goes to the right. And this usually happens every year in the August. So this is one of the source remedies for fall allergies. With morning coryza, violent sneezing, with sensitive to the odor of flowers and skin of peaches. And also can be used for spring coryza, hay fever in the August every year, and on rising from the bed and on handling peaches. The next remedy is arsenicum. We went over arsenicum also in the beginning of the workshop. It burns a red streak over the upper lip, wings of the nose, with sneezing, profuse watery nasal discharge. And remember, we talked about uh, with arsenicum, both the discharge from the nose as well as the uh, discharge from the eyes, which is the tears, both are acrid and excoriating. And then, of course, the typical arsenicum patient could be anxious, restless often asthmatic and the worst hour for these patients is usually after midnight. Sneezing is a prominent symptom but the sneezing is not no joke here. It starts from the tickling in one spot and after sneezing the tickling is as bad as before. 
and the person has what you call hay asthma, meaning along with these sinus symptoms, the patient could also have asthma symptoms. The next MVD is ars iode or arsenicum iodatum. Here, the keynote is the fetid corrosive discharge, which is excoriating thick and yellow, and it resembles honey. So it's like glue-like, honey-like, and the other MVD that has that similar honey-like discharge is graphitis. Then you have arum triphylum. The arum triphylum is this person will be pinching and picking and boring into the nostrils, however sore they are. It's a dreadful catara with the nose completely stopped, worse on the left side, and the sneezing for a person needing arum triphylum is worse at night. Again, the person has fluent acrid coryza. The, the lacrimation is usually bland, and you can compare that uh, with the uh, other remedy, alium sepa. So even in alium sepa, remember the tears were bland, and the which is the lacrimation, and the coryza or the discharge from the nose was active. The fluid from the nose produces rawness, smarting, and burning, and again it leaves red streaks as it flows over the skin. And remember, this symptom was also there in arsenicum. So here, how would you differentiate between arsenicum and arum triphylum? Since both of them have that rawness, the difference would be that the arsenicum won't be digging his fingers into the nostril, whereas the person eating arum triphylum will be pinching, pricking, and boring into the nostril. So see how there's like there are these nuances which separate the symptoms of one remedy from the other. Now coming to Arundo, I had briefly mentioned Arundo when we were doing keynotes, that the keynote for a person eating Arundo is the itching on the palate and also the conjunctiva. They have coryza with snuffling. The first water runs from the nose, so it's the initial discharge is watery, and then later on it's followed by green mucus, and you'll have pieces of that green mucus falling out of the nose. So now, what, remember the other remedy that had the green mucus was Kali bichromicum, but with Kali bichromicum, you can draw the discharge into threads, but here you have like indurated pieces of that mucus coming out. The curious symptoms is when there is sneezing, there are stitches felt in the loins. The next remedy is bromium. Bromium also has the fluent coryza or the nasal discharge with violent sneezing and the corrosive soreness under the margins of the nose. And in this case, it's the right nostril which is more affected. Then these people have aversion to smoking as well as drinking cold water. So each, each of these remedies has its own like peculiar symptoms. So what differentiate, differentiates bromium from some of the other remedies is that it's more right-sided and the corrosive soreness is felt under and the margins of the nose. Whereas if you remember in arsenicum, it was like streaks on the upper lip. So here it's felt under the margins of the nose. Carbovich. So Carbovich became really famous in the past two years during the pandemic because it really helped people uh, increase their oxygenation when they were having shortness of breath. So literally when people were given CarboVeg, their, their O2 stats went up from being in the 80s, mid to lower or upper 80s, they straight went to like 94, 96. So this remedy, this remedy really got a very good uh, reputation during the pandemic when people realized how important, how important this remedy was. For allergy symptoms, a person eating CarboVeg will have frequent sneezing, They'll have the violent crawling and tickling in the nose with the lacrimation, which is nothing else but tears, and with pain, biting pain in and above the nose, with an ineffectual desire to know, to sneeze, with crawling in the left nostril, watery discharge with sneezing day and night, and suffering from the heat, gets chilled by the cold, but sweats in a warm room, and can't find a comfortable place. So the keynote here, as you can see, is the violent crawling and trick tickling that's felt with biting pain just above the nose and the 
lacrimation, which means the tears. And they have that crawling sensation with the ineffectual desire to sneeze, meaning we had all these remedies where they were sneezing nonstop. And here comes a remedy where they're feeling the tickle in the nose, like they want to sneeze, but they are not able to sneeze. So if they tell you that, or if you have a child that says, I feel like sneezing, but I'm not able to sneeze, carbovage would be the remedy to help them. The next remedy is dal kamara. There is congestion, can breathe through the nose. The symptom also exists in a lot of other remedies, including lachesis. There is sneezing with profuse watery discharge from, again, both nose and eyes. They feel worse in the open air and they feel better in the closed room. And they are also aggravated by newly cut grass. So see, there's so many options to pick from um, if your allergy symptoms come on from the freshly cut grass or the smell of flowers. They feel better at seaside, which is like natremure. Their eyes can swell and they're the most affected, then the nose, then again the eyes, and they can't stand the cold and wet, and they get worse from chill when they're hot. To continue on, the next remedy Dr. Tyler talks about is eupratia. Again, eupratia, we went over when we did the keynotes. Profuse acrid lacrimation, meaning the, the tears are acrid and burning, whereas the coriza or the discharge from the nose is completely blank, which is the reverse of alium sepa. It's a short acting remedy, very useful in catarrhal affections with fever, sneezing, fluent, bland coriza with acrid tears. They are worse in the open air and the wind. We talked about jolsamium again when we were doing keynotes. There's a feeling of great weight and tiredness in the whole body uh, with paroxysms of sneezing in the morning, with tingling in the nose, hot face, uh, watery excoriating discharge. A curious symptom that is uh, an indication for gelsamium is the feeling from the throat up to the left nostril as if there's a stream of hot scalding water passing through. And then of course, remember that person may feel chilly and may have that headache uh, with tightness as if there's a band around the head. Then you have Kali Iodatum. Again, a remedy for violent sneezing, acrid watery discharge. They feel worse cool air, worse open air, but they feel they want to be in open air, but they can't seem to find relief anywhere. The frontal sinuses involved with the coriza with pain in the forehead, eyes, as well as cheekbones. So it's one of the leading remedies for sinusitis. Then Khalifos. You would not think Khalifos would be in here for allergies. Khalifos is a remedy we've used uh, for overwhelm, for when you're studying. It's like a nerve tonic. But it can be used for allergy symptoms as well. It's said, Dr. Tyler says it can be used as a prophylactic where you feel itching in the posterior nair, sneezing. At 2 a.m., the eyes could burn, sting, swim in tears, and the tongue is coated stale brownish liquid mustard. So I'll be honest, I have not used Khaliaudatum or Khalifos for allergy symptoms ever. If you get a chance to use them and have success, please do share with me. Then there's lachesis. Lachesis has paroxysms of sneezing, which are worse after sleep, even in the daytime. They have the headache, which extends into the nose with frequent violent paroxysms of sneezing. The mucous membranes or the nose are thickened with a dry stuff sensation through the head, face, with red puffed eyes. The eyes almost seem pressed out and the red sore nostrils and lips. And then there's that purplish discoloration. They sleep into the aggravation. And remember, with lachesis, it's a snake poison. So the throat is very sensitive to touch or pressure. So things to remember for a person needing lachesis is that they're worse after sleep, whether it's during the night or during the day. And then also remember that the sensitivity to the throat. Their throat is very sensitive to touch or pressure. The mucous membranes are thickened. They have that dry, stuffed up feeling and there could be like a purplish discoloration.
now we have another snake poison or a remedy that has been sourced from a snake poison which is naja naja also has a lot of sneezing with the water running from the nose they cannot lie down at night at all because of the dryness of the air passages there are suffocative attacks more so in august like alium sepa and like like says they will wake up suffocating and gasping and choking and there's a rawness of the trachea and the larynx as if it's completely excoriated natremure if you remember we had talked about natremure when we were doing the keynotes the keynote for natremure is that egg white discharge and then dr tyler says that they have that squirming as if as a, from a small worm a uh, watery discharge from the eyes and nose with coryza they have to lay a towel under their nose they will wake they will wake with a headache and after rising the nasal discharge will be violent with frequent sneezing now a key note of natremure and we use this a lot for the current virus is the loss of taste and smell the cough which is from the tickling in that throat pit the lacrimation which is the tears which will be acrid cantha will become red and sore they are worse in the sun natremure has is sourced from salt and they have a desire for salt in the hay fever they are better when they are at the seaside and there's a recorded case of a person that was cured by a swim in the sea so allergy symptoms that became better often natremure of a patient needing natremure when they went out for a swim in the sea they are always better at seaside and remember the loss of taste and smell that's a key note for natremure and that's why natremure was a was really indicated during this uh, current situation then you have nakswamika we talked about nakswamika dietary indiscretions congestion which increases more at night um nakswamika is also has the distressing prolonged paroxysms of sneezing with excessive irritation in the nose and eyes heat as if a hot iron plate was near it that's how the face feels as if there's a hot iron plate near it the itching then extends to the larynx and the trachea and of course the person needing the nux is going to be extremely irritable sh short fuse and they usually very sensitive to cold now sorinum is actually a no sore and this is a this has a sort of continuous hay fever that runs all year and then it ripens up in the fall the catarrhal state is of the eyes as well as the nose what that means is as discharge from both eyes and nose the nose dries up part of the time and then it runs part of the time and must continuously use the handkerchief the hay fever a difficult condition to fit a remedy to the constitution must be built up before hay fever will cease says kent and the person eating the surinum is very cold so they will wrap up in the hottest of summer they want their head covered they want the body covered they are the ones who are wearing that extra layer when everybody else is in like tank tops and t-shirts the skin is greasy oily and looks unwashed so surinum is a remedy a uh, source from a no sore it's a remedy to consider um if indicated remedies are not working or if they are getting these symptoms um every year in using this as a intercurrent or an antimyasmatic or a state remedy will help in their um uh, episodes becoming fewer and fewer with each passing year now the last few remedies are uh, from dr margaret tyler's list of uh, common hay fever remedies ranunculus ranunculus the eyes smart the lips burn and they become sore the nose will be stuffed more in the evening and the pressure is felt at the root of the nose So if you remember the other remedy that had the pressure at the root of the nose was kali ban. So here along with the pressure at the root of the nose they have the tingling and the crawling inside and may feel it all the way in the posterior nares and they are constantly hawking and they're swallowing in an effort to scratch that affected part. There is hoarseness, stitching pains in the chest and the muscles are sore. and you have to compare that swallowing and hawking in an effort to scratch where they are feeling the itchiness inside in the posterior nares with wipe here 
which is the remedy at the end of this list. And we'll get to that in a minute. We already talked about Sabadilla, the spasmodic incest and sneezing with the fluent coryza. Nostrils are completely stuffed up. The inspiration through the nose is labored. There's snoring, itching, could be bleeding, which salts then zincum, violent sneezing, copious watery discharge with severe frontal pains and redness of the eyelids. And this is very, very, very uh, uh, peculiar symptom of Sabadilla that they are very, very sensitive to the smell of garlic. So sensitivity to garlic, Sabadilla is like one of the leading remedies in Amajira Medica. Sanguinaria. Sanguinaria, we call them uh, rose coals in June because they're so sensitive to the smell of flowers and odors. So it, here we talk about flowers, but if there's a person that's very sensitive to perfumes or odors or you know essential oils, consider sanguinaria for them as well. They'll be burning in the nose and throat with dryness and it feels as if they're going to crack open. There's dry burning in the larynx and hoarseness of chest with asthma. The palms will be dry, burning and wrinkled. The, there's burning in the palms and soles and the patient will put the feet out of the bed. And this peculiar symptom of putting your feet and uh, your palms and soles outside the bed is in some other remedies as well, sulfur, pulsatilla, chamomilla, as well as medorana. Silesia. Silesia also has the itching and tingling, sneezing, excoriating discharge, as well as the itching in the posterior nares or orifice of the eustachian tubes. They have the itching in the ears as well. And the other remedy to consider for itching um, in the posterior nares and the orifice of the eustachian tubes is arsenicum and then vipia. So these are the big itching remedies, arsenicum, silesia, and vipia. Coming, we're almost to the end of the workshop. We have Sinapis nigra. If you remember, the alternate nose, nostrils were swollen and uh, were congested in this. So it'll be one and then the other. The mucous membranes can be dry and hot. They are worse in the afternoon and evening. One nostril is affected or alternate nostrils will be affected. Be, the nose will be swollen, stuffed with a thin acted discharge. And this is also in another remedy called Eilanthus. The eyes feel suffused, they itch and they smart. Then you have Sticta. Sticta has a constant need to blow the nose, but no discharge as results on account of the dryness. The nose is stuffed up and the secretion drying up so rapidly that it can't even be discharged. So it's, there is secretion, but it just dries up and never comes out. There's an almost constant sneezing with tingling, more on the right side of the nose. Fullness is also on the right side, forehead to root of the nose, with dryness of the soft palate and tickling, which is felt high up in the pharynx. Vaipia, along with the other remedy that has the symptom of itching in the roof of the mouth, which Arundo, so two remedies for that peculiar itching in the roof of the mouth, Vaipia and Arundo. And to get some relief, the patient must draw the tongue back and forth over the soft palate. And along with that, your coryza sneezing symptoms are all still there. So this patient will be moving the tongue back and forth on the palate because they feel the itching in the roof of the mouth. Then you have zincum. Zincum also has the frequent sneezing with the cutting, crawling in the nose with fluent coryza, sensitive nostrils, crawling sensation in the nose, frequent sneezing, itching first in the left, followed by right, and then that'll have, then there'll be frequent sneezing much burning in the eyes with itching, photophobia. These are people that are overworked, overexcitable, extremely sensitive like the Naxvamika, and they have burning whole length of the spine, fidgety feet, and they, these patients feel better once they get their period. So these are some of the other books uh, by Dr. Margaret Lucy Tyler. You have the pointers to the common remedies. This was the book that was actually recommended to me by my mentor and guru, Dr. Anil Habu. Um, he said, if you have to read one book, make it this one. And then she has other books, which is the acute conditions and injuries. She's written a book on the homeopathic drug pictures. 
or which describe the state or the constitution of the different remedies or people needing the different remedies. And then she wrote this book with James Tyler Kent on how to study and use the repertory as well as how to repertorize. So repertorizing is, repertory is just like a dictionary of symptoms where you can search for the symptoms and put together a group of remedies which will then bring lead you to a group of symptom a group of symptoms that lead you to a group of remedies from which you can pick the most appropriate remedy so that brings us to the end of today's uh, webinar slash workshop thank you so much for attending this was like i said uh, my gift or my dedication to my dad because he was the one who pushed me into studying homeopathy, thinking that I would solve his sinus issues, which I, like I said, um, they were solved to a huge extent um, by simple remedies like the aconite, arsenicum all. Um, for him, it was always the aconite whenever he was exposed to cold, uh, arsenicum all when he was exposed to dust, or if he was going from you know, the air conditioning would be on inside his office when he went to the office. And then when he would come out, it would be, you know, the heat of Bombay, the pollution. So when he was going back and forth between the air conditioning and the heat, this was the remedy, arsenicum out that always helped him. And if he was exposed to cold, cold drinks, or if he went on vacation to like a health station, or if he went on a long flight where the air conditioning was going to be on the whole time, it was the aconite that always helped him. So I felt it was only appropriate that I dedicate this workshop to him. So happy birthday, dad. And thank you everybody for um, taking the time to attend this workshop. If you have questions, you can always email me, yashidyao.com. Like I said, you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I also shared links of a lot of the other websites um, that I trust. So let's continue this journey of homeopathic learning. Think homeopathy first and pay it forward.